We push over a large, sprawling suburban city, clean, pristine. Strong shades of white fill the buildings as we push down into a slightly grimier setting, a skate park. We push all the way in up to a wheel. Looking up from the wheel of a pastel purple skate, we see Al. Al, tell us what you look like. Al is an effortlessly cool, uh, just wearing, similar to this, just a beautiful blazer over top of a white, uh, pristine, magical girl suit. Her leg is like propped up. She's leaned in the back corner of this place um, with the roller like roller skate uh, also up in the air, very heavy, but she's making it look effortless. Um, and actually this blazer is off her shoulder as she's on her phone. You see she's got this beautiful dark brown skin bubblegum pink uh, dreads that are, not dreads, we'll go goddess locks, um, that are just like half of them hanging down, the other half up in a pristine bun. Um, wonderful, beautiful makeup. Uh, and you see she's got a pot, like in one of her pockets for her blazer uh, that is hanging off her shoulder, a black mask pokes out of it. But right now she's just chewing bubblegum and texting and not texting. She's on her pager. That's what's happening. Yeah. She's on her pager. She's like sending out so many messages. Rapid fire sending out messages yeah. at a speed that a pager is simply not built to keep up with. No. Uh, it is looking a little bit worn at this point, like the buttons have been overused. Yeah. We see just over your shoulder where your blazer hangs, uh, a large cacophony of smoke fill the air. Uh, you can hear the thud of something large falling over and in the distance behind the skate park, smoke plumes above it. Out of the tunnel, uh, a skate pipe, a door swings open, uh, shuffling with uh, clipboards and a large rule book. Tell me what you look like, Mora. I'm stumbling in, uh, doing my best to like, juggle the things that I have, like multiple like stopwatches and and uh, um, my own uh, like worn journal and my clipboards. Uh, I'm gonna like write myself a little bit uh, as I like straighten my hoodie. I've got a uh, um, like purplish blue colored hair, uh, but like tied half up, half down, so that it's like very practical. I've got um, thick rimmed glasses and um, like olive toned skin and just a, an air of like very much like a navel gazer, like a little bit highly strung mm -hmm. um, and very careful and always just a little overwhelmed. Now this is your mundane form. You're this not transformed into anything. This is a uh, standard human looking right yeah. now. Uh, you also hear the loud thud. Uh, you don't see the smoke yet. You're coming out in the direction where it would be behind the building that you're coming out of, but you absolutely cannot miss the sound of, of something the size of potentially a, a small house hitting the ground. Uh-oh. Was that you? As we push across. <laughs> Uh, on the other side of the skate park, a close-up on a hand wiping across a counter as a plume of dust recoats the entire countertop in a gray oh. color. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Filling your, your lungs with smoke. Tell us, Ashley, what you look like. Yes, Ashley uh, is a mixed Korean. Uh, she has dyed blonde hair. The roots are sort of growing out a little bit. Um, it's wavy. She has it pulled over to the side in like a deep part um, and wearing just like a, you know, tied up white t-shirt, baggy uh, ripped jeans and just has like paint all over her. Uh, you know, some of it's dry, some of it might be a little wet, and uh, I'm, oh no, oh gosh, and like trying to like scoop up the dust, but then I realize, <laughs> oh, I can't scoop this up, and then I like grab like a rag that I, has a little bit of wet spray paint on it and try to like scoop that up too. The 
smoke kind of mixes and like the, the particles of dust kind of mix with the paint on the rag. And at this point, you're just kind of like painting chunky, fresh white paint into the surface of the countertop of the bar uh, where typically you would serve snacks, a concession stand. Uh, on the other side of the concession stand, watching this happen, mm. uh, we pull, pull up a little bit uh, and, and are immediately um, our vision is filled with pink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about Polly. Yeah, uh, Pauldrin or Polly, as they go by with their friends, reaches over a large hand uh, and sort of rests it on Ashley's. It's like they say, we may have bigger problems to deal with and oh. looks over where the explosion happened, the large noise. Uh, Polly looks like they may have just come from the gym. They're wearing very like 80s, 90s inspired workout clothes, tiny black shorts uh, and a bright pink hoodie at the moment. And I want to say there's a sweatband oh. that's uh, around their head. Uh, and they also have been like going back from the slushy machine when this thing happened and turned around to see what would be a clean counter. I can turn it into an art project. Maybe later. Okay. Oh. Every one of your pagers at once alights. It is a notification from uh, a number that you recognize. This is something that gets alerted when anybody in the area can help. Uh, you know that this is a pager that was assigned to you by your school. Some of you choose to use it extracurricular when it is supposed to be assigned for your studies, but it alights for all of you a buzz uh, if you have, wear it on your hip, if it's in your hand, if it's in your bag. All at the same time, a familiar sound that you know means danger is afoot and you are called to action. Oh no, oh, okay, we gotta find the rest of the group. Okay. Yeah? Okay. And then I guess we're just gonna run down the, uh, the pipe and see if we can find our friends. This is gonna make me so late. I, uh. It's a mission. Okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Where's everybody else? Uh, oh, we're here. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Oh, covered in. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, what is this? Well, it looks like it's a summons. Whatever we just heard, it's dangerous. Do we go there or do we. Is it time to just. Do we, okay. I think so. Is it time? Mm-hmm. I think it's time. Let's roll. Let's, Let's roll! roll. <laughs> Drop everything. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we will continue with your Magical Girl sequences after we get into an intro. Hello and welcome to In the Name of Yee! a Woo! brand new series here on Pixel Circus sponsored by Evil Hat. Evil Hat, thank you so much for giving us a little bit of early access to this game, for sponsoring this series and making it possible. We are playing this on Girl by Moonlight. If you're familiar with Blades in the Dark, you may be familiar with the rules that we are using here. But this is, of course, a lovely and magical setting. Uh, this is a four episode series and this is, of course, your first episode. We're going to go around and we are going to meet our players. We'll introduce ourselves once again, uh, starting with Lexi. Yeah, um, my name is Lexi. I'm here. I'm playing Zariah. Um, yeah, that's it. What are Zariah's pronouns? Zariah's pronouns are she, he, they. Mm -hmm. Any and all. But, you know, make just make sure you acknowledge her. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could do anything else. Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Kaylee Bray, and I am playing Mara Troy. Uh, both our pronouns are she, her. Absolutely. Hello, I am Danny Gage. I am playing Ashley Park, and both of our pronouns are also she, her. And I'm Xander Genre, and I use he, him pronouns, but today I'm trying on they, them pronouns with Pauldron Shepherd. Very excited. Uh, and I am Sage Ryan. I am your game master for this game. Uh, and let's resume, because I believe we have an incredibly important part of magic to get into your transformation sequences. <laughs> no, now, <I'm> very <laughs> of course, Al, you are already in your magical garb. Mm -hmm. Do you reach for your mask though? I do reach for my mask. It's a very quick thing where I'm like checking my watch while everyone else is doing theirs. And at <laughs> the last second, like while they blend into light and they cannot see out, I just like take the mask out. <laughs> 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 just waiting. Amazing. Put on the mask. Amazing. Which I have here. Oh, um, yeah. My mask. Um, it is a wonderful half and half mask. So the way this one flourishes up, um, actually, the mask that I have is cracked glass uh, mm. with beautiful golden wings coming off of it, and stars. Like the wings melt into stars, um, and the other half is just this like black wire, so that I can see through it. But the other half goes off the side of my face. So it's a wonderful mask. What does? activating your magic when you put the mask on it is like that final 
uh, final button mm -hmm. on your magical transformation. What does magic look like for you when you're emanating that power? I think it's this warm, bright light and I reach out into nothingness and conjure a staff that when the mask is on with this staff, the mask, it doesn't like, it's not fusing to my face, but it stays there. Mm -hmm. um, and this staff matches it. I think that there is like a bombastic sprinkle of golden makeup that sprays across my face <sighs> and becomes like, just completely makes me into my alter ego. Incredible. Oh, they're you so cool. Emanate so cool. magic Can't and power it. and charisma. Now, uh, a full transformation yeah. sequence. Now for something completely different. Yeah. 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 You. When you initiate to access your magic, the skate park around you melts away. You are alone with your source of power and ability. Would you describe that sequence for me? Yes, uh, when it's time, uh, everything drops except for the uh, uh, keychain that I reach for just on my uh, little belt loop uh, that is a like teal turquoise skate wheel. Um, and I just kind of like lay a hand on it, um, my little journal still in my hand. And as it starts to glow, so does the journal as the pages start to like whip open and illuminate in that same teal, like turquoise light. Um, as uh, my uh, outfit changes to a very traditional uh, like student uniform in that same like teal turquoise um, and uh, uh, same hairstyle, but the glasses just kind of like melt away. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Incredible. The camera follows from your hands around that book, transforming from your nails up your arms, up to your shoulders, the glasses melting away magically. There's no action of taking them off. They simply fizzle out of existence, fixing your vision as they <laughs> do. Uh, your hair flows effortlessly around it with the gust of wind coming up from your book as you your outfit slowly kind of um, manifests around your body, shaping to it, and the skate park reforms around you in your new form. Okay, I think I'm ready. Take that jacket off. Yes! <laughs> outfit yes. reveal! Yes. Yay! Oh my gosh! <laughs> As the gust of wind from the book in Mora's hands settles down, Ashley, you as well, the skate park melts away around you. There's a buzzing of two beings kind of encircling you as you activate your transformation sequence. Yes, as I activate my transformation sequence, I have like on my like hip, there's a keychain, and one of them's like a fuzzy ball and the other is like a yellow uh, skate wheel. And so I'll pull it off and I'll do a little spin and I'll sing, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And as I do, ti, do, we get these little blips that were kind of swirling around me and one flashes uh, bright pink and the other flashes yellow. And uh, you see these bright little kind of sprites appear and keep continuing to swirl around me and uh, kind of dancing along to the music. <laughs> and we get a magic transformation. Yes! The sprites encircling around you sort of like paint and reveal your outfit with each kind of circle they make around your body. Uh, it doesn't appear as one whole piece of clothing, it's literal stripes of it forming around you as they leave a trail of magic behind them, revealing your magical alter ego uh, up through your hair, all the way down to your shoes. And um, as they kind of flutter up above you, you rejoin the world uh, and the skate park around you. Amazing. Uh, and with that, I'll just say, Idle Melody's ready. <laughs> Pauldron, you yeah. uh, have received the call. You've seen Idle Melody transform in front of you. And as Idle Melody uh, starts to kind of reappear in that other form, the world melts away yeah. around you. Yeah, Pauldron also has grabbed uh, one of these skate wheels, but they keep it in their uh, sock. <laughs> and so they just pull it up and it is a keychain, but uh, it is a clear plastic pink uh, skate wheel. Uh, that they hold out, and again, we've been ready for this. These she pink shields 
pop up around uh, their body. Uh, and smaller versions of it seem to form around their fists as they ball them up and they sort of clack them together. Uh, and as they do, pink energy sparks out, making a full suit of armor. Uh, there are like different pieces that sort of clink together. And at once they're fully suited out, it seems to shrink and get smaller and then explode, revealing uh, uh, this outfit instead. Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh. And uh, yeah, the pink bow uh, shines out. They have uh, two white gloves that form over their hands that also act uh, with this pink energy. Uh, and you can see these like thick thighs underneath a rippling skirt that has these pink and black accents. Ooh. Uh, yeah, they have a puff of pink hair that is accented by a single dangly pink earring. Zooming through your transformation as the shields uh, like fight off the world around you, encasing you in complete safety to make your transformation, uh, the shields open to reveal you to everyone else once you are finished, as you are back at the skate park. Another thud comes from the distance. The same plume of smoke is billowing in the skies, and you start to hear people yelling. There are shrieks uh, of people running. You even see people start to kind of pass by the skate park that they are running in the direction away from the event that's happening in the distance. All right, everyone, just like we rehearsed, we have to shout our names so that people know we're here to save them, okay? And we strike a pose and uh, Polly shouts out, Idol Guard. Idol Melody. Idol Vision. Idol Alias. Let's roll! <laughs> and we cut to <laughs> arriving at the scene. Now, I believe you all have a preferred method of transportation. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, well, I would think well, maybe Al was first because the that might be fastest. Absolutely. Um, so I am... I'm just skating right on up. Um, I think that I my rollerblades, which are roller skates, uh, which have the purple wheel, um, just absolutely bolting up to this thing. Um, are we going through the skate pipe? I think we have to. That's is the only that, way in and out. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. That is the exit of your lair. Uh, your home base is, of course, set up within the skate park, uh, which all of you kind of manage together. And we'll, we'll get into the management of that in a little bit. But you do exit through the skate pipe. Amazing. I am zooming. I'm going very, very fast. And I'm being very efficient with how I skate. Uh, and I... Almost like uh, Wizard of Oz style, like click my uh, skates together um, that are have that like teal wheel, um, and uh, very carefully also like a little bit more measured, am attempting to catch up with you, uh, but not quite as reckless with my movements. <laughs> As you skate off, I just do it, ooh, and then I do a little spin and then like push off into the first like skate. Uh, it's very <laughs> almost like ice skatery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think in a similar fashion, uh, Pauldron sort of clicks their skates together and they the wheels sort of merge into blades, but they're like energy blades. So they're also sort of carving through like an ice skater. You see through the smoke, a bit of a clearing where a large bluish green uh, monstrous sludge is moving in between the buildings. It glides almost like you do on your skates, but it looks like the base of it almost doesn't move from the street. Mm -hmm. It is wide enough to cover almost the entire width of the street in between the buildings as it pushes through. A few other magical people are already at the scene you see somebody skate by the uh, in the sky it looks like they're almost jumping across uh, little forming clouds at their feet uh, as they hurl a gust of wind towards the creature and it takes it to the side in stride uh, another person uh, down on the ground is trying to make way with fists absolutely brute force trying to punch into the base of this thing as their fist just kind of sludges into the being and pulls back out with it seemingly un affected. Okay, what do we think we can do? I'm gonna flip through my book to see if there is any kind of sign of something uh, that maybe I might have experienced uh, what, from my different time uh, mm -hmm. and see if there is a clue to what this might be and what its weaknesses might mm -hmm. be. Now, you are using the Time Traveler yes. playbook for this, so this is an ability that you have. Uh, your book, mm -hmm. Who, whose book is that? I don't know. 
Okay. Oh. I was uh, found by the uh, by the shrine or the pit, uh, and I was very very young, like three or four, and I just had this book with me, and it's always been with me. Uh, we know that I am from some time else, and that's all my parents really told me, and that's what this book told me. And sometimes it tells me other things, and I don't know who's telling me these things. Uh, but I'm hoping eventually they'll tell me who they are. Mm. But first, I would like them to tell me what this is. <laughs> now, are you using an ability to make contact with that, or is that something that is, uh, you're just flipping through for something that you hope is pre-written? Uh, I think that, hey, let's, hey, let's, let's open strong with an ability, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think I will use my time traveler ability, rewind, return. You have been through this timeline at least once before. So flashbacks mm -hmm. cost uh, one less stress than normal. Mm -hmm. uh, how did this go wrong the first time is the question that I'm apt to, to okay. ask here. So this works a little bit differently for you. Mm -hmm. You might picture it being something of like a that's so raven, I'm gonna flash back. <laughs> uh, which like flashbacks in general exist in this game. Mm -hmm. You can sometimes just jump to, uh, oh, you're self-preparing at home. But mm. for you, you're flashing to another timeline when you've already experienced this event here and hoping that you have left something for yourself. We do. We head into your mind for a second. Uh, it, it looks kind of like you trying to see it as your mundane self without your glasses on. Everything is a little bit blurry, but you definitely do in your mind see this creature. You watch the creature start to fall. And you see, uh, looking down at your skates, that there is a string tied around one of the wheels on your skate that seems to be strung and running elsewhere before you flash back in. And uh, left in there uh, in uh, your book is just string. You've left yourself some kind of note from maybe another timeline. Maybe that was their last time you experienced it and that's how you figured it out. Um, who could say? String. 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 Okay. We need some? Yes, I think, I think it needs to be contained. Okay. Okay, I can do that. And then uh, Idle Guard will start to uh, put their energy together, creating a shield that's almost like a, a dome, a cloche, uh, something to like capture this thing in. Uh, and we'll try to build it Green Lantern style, but yeah. pink. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. So, you're, what are you? What are you creating? Like a dome mm -hmm. that I'd be able to put down over this slime to put it in, like uh, capturing a bug in a, a glass. Now that's a big dome, and you want to make that with your shield. This thing is like full street width, two ah. two lane street. So, are you accessing an ability, or is this something that you create with your existing shields that you can reform? Yeah, I think it's something that I'd have to recreate. But um, when I'm transformed, if uh, I would say a how dare you is one of my transcendent abilities. Uh -huh. So if anything strikes the dome, uh -huh. uh, I gain a plus one effect uh, and then to try to uh, rebound against it. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, I am going to have you do a roll for this. Yeah. Uh, let's do. Would you like this to be like an expression of your ability? Mm -hmm. uh, would you like this to be something that you are trying to defy? Yeah, I think expression of the ability. All right, let's roll an express roll. Express. Yeah, do you have anything in express? I do not. Okay. You can also bargain with me for another ability if you're going to explain to me you why it is. You mentioned defy. I did. Now that sounds way better. <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention it. Yeah. Okay, I think in this scenario, you're looking at it, you're being provided with information that is strange mm. and you know is from out of this world. Um, and though it seems impossible, you are willing to defy those odds. Nice. Uh, I, roll that for me. Would I be able to potentially call over, Melody, do you have a song for this that could help out for an assist? Uh, I will go ahead and I will like kind of skate around this thing as you're trying to build it. Mm. And I'll just say, uh, tie it up, tie it up, put it down and tie it up. <laughs> you can absolutely have an assist for that. Yes. <laughs> That's 100% assist, that gives you an additional D6. Sweet. So that is a total of two right now, yes. right? Okay, because I had one dot in Defy. Perfect. I got a three and a one. 
Okay. So. So a <laughs> one to three in general is not a success. Can more members of the group participate? Yeah, can I? Uh, you would have had to assist before, before the, the action was okay. taken, before yeah. the role is, was does taken. Does this count as a group action because I'm helping? So that is an assist. Oh, okay. One person Different. helping cool. is an assist. If everybody works together, then we get a group action. So mm -hmm. with that in mind, mm -hmm. you start pulling your energy. Mm -hmm. It takes the same kind of uh, like beautiful uh, translucent pink color as your shields that mm -hmm. protect you and you try and create from nothing a dome to encase this creature in to hold it uh, and, and it does appear in front of you. You oh. do see it starting to take form. I think I it's got it. It's slowly crawling up to form the tip of the dome Ugh. when the creature slides out of it. Ugh. You lose your concentration and it breaks apart, slowly just disappearing. Your shields return to your side Ugh. without it encasing the creature. Oh no! I can't get it. You tried, you did really Sorry. good. You were, you were doing really well. Okay, maybe we need to we, we need to uh, keep it from spilling out first. I, uh, I would imagine I have many uh, rolls of laces for skates on me pretty much at all times. You Ooh. absolutely do, equipment manager. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. I just like start pulling them out, like knotting them together, like handing them to people, just like making as long a rope as possible. <laughs> and I tie one end to my skate like I saw in my uh, uh, like flashback vision moment. Oh. Uh, and I start, um, Offering like like edges and loops to uh, my compatriots. Yeah. I think if we can maybe uh, keep it physically contained first, that'll give you enough space to to contain it properly with your power. Yeah, I'll try again. Okay. I think I would like to use a transcendent ability. Ooh. If I may. You absolutely may. What would you like to do? I would like to use the ability watch this. So when I push myself, I can choose one of the following additional benefits. Um, I could either perform a monologue without being interrupted, which <laughs> might be kind of interesting right now. <laughs> but I'm going to perform a a superhuman feat of athletics. Oh. So using my magic, I would love to take the lead, like the tiniest little aglet. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to start skating, and I would love for my magic to conjure a ramp around, like starting from the bottom, that everyone else can also skate up. Um, so I'm going to double up on ability. So I'm going to do my transcendent abilities where I'm going to skate super fast all the way up and try to pull this thing super tight. But also I'm going to try to use my working from the shadows um, when I secretly set up another character's action, roll plus 1d. If they succeed, mark XP. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> A lot of things are happening here. A lot here, of things. And yeah. I love it. Now you did say you're pushing yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, oh. in this game, pushing yourself gives you some options. Mm -hmm. You can either take two stress mm -hmm. or... I can offer you a poisoned promise. <gasps> I'm gonna go with the poison promise. All oh, every single time, don't yeah. even ask. Uh, <laughs> it's just poison promise. A gift. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put a pin in that for a moment. Ah, perfect. I will answer that in the future. Uh -oh. And you uh, are able to create this ramp. You are setting up everyone else for success and the ability to follow up with what they can do. And it does, it appears, what is um, what does the ramp look like? Um, it is this uh, effervescent purple, like bright lavender uh, glitter mm -hmm. ramp that every time I take a skate forward, I push forward, it forms in front of me uh -huh. and then solidifies. And as it solidifies, it's like glitter, but it's also like gingham. Like it's just <laughs> a pat beautiful preppy pattern. Um, and my little scepter that I'm dragging behind me, I think, yeah, I think I'm dragging it behind me, which is also solidifying it. So it's Incredible. like a thing, I'm like ice queening up, <laughs> where I'm like yes. turning it into ice as I skate. Um, and I'll just yell back to everyone, should be easier now. That's great. I uh, start following up the ramp with that uh, loop tied to my mm. skate so I can basically uh, start circling it with that lace um, uh, with the trail behind me if anybody else wants yeah, to also have it. Yeah, and you said there's it. other loops. Yeah, there's other loops so that we can like all that. like, okay. uh, tie it up together perfectly uh i'm Falling going after. to also take a loop and i will skate on after you and uh can i try a thing here too as well yes yeah. please do okay <laughs> once per transcendence you may uplift your allies with a speech a song when you do it counts a spending link on each ally that can hear you uh -huh. then choose which link effect to use so uh, I think I'd like to use uh, bonus a, a bonus die. Yeah. Yes. 
And so uh, as I skate off the, the little, uh, what is it, ramp, mm -hmm. I'll just say, doing things is fun together, work so much better when we're together, <laughs> and, yeah. and jump off. Yeah. So that is an additional D6 for your allies? Yes. Uh, for every, it says, uh, when you do it, counts as spending a link on each ally that can hear you. Um, and I think also as I do this, the little uh, blips, my little pixies, are like doing little uh, note things like on a sing-along. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
there is inevitably going to be some danger that comes from that, but never a danger that has yet to be able to fend off or not be bested by the incredible forces of magical people, both those still in training like yourselves at the local Alstra Academy, or those who have graduated into full-time work as magical idols, as magical figures, as magical people, um, as they, they head down the streets. When you travel through the city, you know this route well. You've been celebrated in the parade before, but this time you are the stars of it. Mm -hmm. As students, this is usually about people more like your teachers. Right. Your teachers are often in the parade. People who teach at the academy are also usually actively in service as magical girls. So you even see a few of your teachers walking in the parade that come by to congratulate each of you. A handshake, a pat on the back, an approving smile um, from some of the more focused classes that each of you take. <laughs> One in particular actually to you, Pauldron, mm. uh, somebody who is built similarly to you, rippling muscles, very strong that you recognize as somebody uh, who teaches strength and focus. Uh, this is your teacher, Diana. Diana. Awesome. Diana is just Diana, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, comes up to you and, uh, though stoic in uh, their face, looks to you and reaches out a hand for a strong and firm handshake. We do the this one. Yeah! Yeah, yeah. yeah for their handshake. They grip <laughs> yeah. onto your arm and Diana looks at you with an approving nod and says, I'll see you in class tomorrow. <gasps> I'll be napping until then. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they smirk a little bit at that and then continue back into some of the chants of the parade, clapping along in song as you all move past the rest of the city. Uh, the parade will uh, pass by the roller rink, which I believe is called Zippy's? Zippy's. Yeah. Zippy's Roller Rink. Zippy's Roller Rink. <laughs> Zippy's Roller Rink is on the route on the way, so if you wanted to slip out of the parade and return, you can, or you can follow this thing for a full lap through the city. That is up to you. I'm oh gonna it's pass out. It's our first one. It's our first one. Okay. <laughs> All right. One lap. <laughs> One lap. And it seems like the people of this city, especially the folks in uh, mundane form, whether they are magical people and are choosing to be mundane at the time, you can't usually tell. Um, it seems like they have endless bouts of energy for these kind of celebrations. Like they reserve their energy throughout the day. They go to their day-to-day -day lives, they go and they work, and every day they look forward to gathering for this celebration as they carry you through the city. And you do, you make an entire lap through the city and it takes a good, uh, I'd say additional 45 minutes on the walk. You're mostly going through the main square. Uh, Alster City in itself is huge, mm -hmm. it is sprawling. Uh, but this kind of central parade route that you're familiar with, that you probably celebrate others in, uh, will come all the way back around to the starting point and it will not pass the roller rink again, mm -hmm. but it'll get you back to the place where uh, it started. Close enough. So you can skate back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love that. And you know that you have uh, about an hour at this point before it is time to open for the evening for the open skate. Oh, we gotta get this mess cleaned up. Uh, the uh, thing about the counters, uh, oh, hey, scrapey? Hey, hey Prez, scrapey? is it okay if we use powers for cleaning this one time? <gasps> yeah, okay. do what you have to do. Okay, okay. <laughs> do, 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 do. No, I need your help, come on. And the little pixie guys, they're just gonna swarm around. They're gonna help us yeah. with those scrapers. And it, it's not really helping that much, but they're trying. They're making they're making work on the small spaces they, they sure can reach. Yeah. Uh, they can definitely get into little corners that would be tough for each of you to get into. So helpful. And yeah. fortunately, uh, Pauldron, with your bolstered ability, is able to kind of scrape off those layers of like crusted in dusty paint on the mm -hmm. counter no good. Uh, to get that back to a surface yes. that you could feasibly serve. And shoveling like on. rubble that was knocked down and putting it somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> yeah, reconstructing now. Zippy's in itself has a kind of, um, let's say, abandoned chic mm -hmm. aesthetic to it. Nobody calls it squatting when magical people run a roller ring. Hey. Uh, so you have been able to claim this as a fortress, as a home base, as a clubhouse of sorts. Yes. Uh, there is, of course, through the door that we saw you come out of earlier, uh, there is a um, like lounge of sorts where you're able to gather. But I'd like to go around and I'd like to establish some things about Zippy's. I would like each of you to tell me something that is true about mm. Zippy's roller rink. So let's start with Xander. Yeah. Uh, 
Pauldron. Mm -hmm. What is something that you love about Zippies? Something that I love about Zippies is that there is something for each of us here to make it home. Mm -hmm. uh, and in particular, I know that Mora might be worried about uh, this aspect and Pauldron reaches over to a compartment that was hidden from falling rubble and debris. Uh, and there is a can that they pull out and it's f of cat food. Uh, and so they look to see that it's safe and that everything is okay, and they hand it over to Mora and say, I know you'll be worried about them. Thanks. I'll go take care of them now before we open. <laughs> Danny, Ashley, what is something that exists in Zippies? What's your favorite feature? Oh, my favorite thing is the lights. The lights <laughs> are so cool. Uh, I might have found, you know, uh, like a horde of just like LED type lights that we have strung up everywhere. We have a disco ball. Mm -hmm. We have mm. the little thing that like does all the little colored lights everywhere. Uh, so it's just like sparkles everywhere. And it feels like we just exist in sparkles when we turn these lights on. And so uh, as you come on in, I'm just like turning on the lights. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. There's like a spotlight yeah. that shoots down. I like to like skate through it a little bit. Um, just go but, ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fun to just twirl around in it sometimes. Music starts up from like a... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and so we're just getting the party started a little bit. I'm warming up everything. You hear tonight. the loud thuds of the activations of those big spotlights that kick into the sky. From a distance, you would be able to see where the skate park is as they uh, shine up into what is now dimming to the uh, a late, uh, late afternoon, early evening sky. Uh, the disco ball in itself, because this is an outdoor roller rink, is strung up. There are some large towers on the side, and it almost looks like, because of a thin wire, the disco ball is floating in the center of it, reflecting all of your LEDs from every direction into uh, a place that's Sparkles like you do. <gasps> Yay! Aurora Rorealis. That could have been an alternate name for yeah. Yeah. Skate Park, Too hard but to say. Zippies it is! <laughs> <laughs> Maura, what is your favorite part of Zippies? <gasps> My favorite part of Zippies, apart from the colony of cats that like live around the skate park that I take care of every day, uh, is the single arcade machine that like as I am uh, like rolling out to go feed the cat, like gathering up all of my belongings, I have to just kind of like kick it mm -hmm. uh, a little bit just because of maintenance. <laughs> it's like ching ching, and it's, it'll start to kind of like flicker on uh, for the people who need a little bit of a break from skating. There's like one extra thing to kind of do uh, that uh, takes quarters, but uh, for close friends of ours, there's always there's just a little secret, and other people also know the exact kind of like per, like two knocks and like a whack yep. yeah. to get it to uh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. 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 yeah to get it to just run the whole time as you kick on the arcade machine uh with your foot it does pop up press start on there you see a one or two player button in front of it and the music kind of joins with the music that's overtaking the place all right al as Club president, mm -hmm. what's your favorite part of Zippies? My favorite part is how Zippies just feels like a skate park. Like it's it's a skate park that feels like a skate park. Hmm. Um, no, my favorite part of <laughs> Zippies is that there are so many spaces for all different kinds of skaters. You can see rollerbladers. You can see like kind of speed tracks for inline skaters. Um, there's some. I think there's some dirt bike ac dirt bike action if you really wanted to. Yeah. Just like interesting tracks. Um, but the main thing you see that. Uh, Al kind of focuses where the, the half pipes are and the quarter pipes are, where the skaters hang out. Um, there's like just a different energy between each group, uh, but it's all very welcoming. So it's like a huge, accommodating, accessible roller park where people can just like do whatever. And we have a lot of different groups that come here and hang out. As we push through that area with the half pipes and a little bit more of like a trick area, uh, it ends at the um, full pipe where uh, you enter into your clubhouse. Uh, on the wall where the door is, there is also a mounted photo of your roller derby team. Mm -hmm. Each of you in pose. Uh, in the photo, definitely all a little bit bruised, having clearly just yeah. finished a match, <laughs> but holding a trophy in front of you. Uh, it says, uh, you know, Alster Academy. Academy on it as the official roller derby team and roller club of Alster Academy. 
it turns out you could kind of corner the market on most things with wheels mm -hmm. as uh, it wasn't a super popular sport at Alster Academy. Now, each of you joined this year. Um, the photo looks very fresh. It's pretty recent, like maybe your bruises have pretty much just healed from that last match here. Uh, you are, of course, a freshman team um, and a freshman club at the, um, at the school. So the photo looks recent, but standing in it, uh, behind you all, looking proudly, uh, is an adult is somebody who looks uh, a little bit older than you, standing in the back, pointing over your shoulders to the trophy. Uh, now, this is, I believe, an idol that that might have put all of this together. Will you tell me a little bit about the person that brought you to the club? Yeah, well, I mean, Idol Prime found me. Uh, like, I was wandering around not knowing what to do with my physique. I would get bullied a lot of the time uh, because I was so much bigger than everybody else and I thought I could never be a magical person. And they brought me to Zippy's and it did not look like this. It was pretty run down. <laughs> but yeah, they always just saw what was inside as opposed to what was on the outside. Idol Prime stands looking proudly in that photo, but uh, you know when you pass by the photo that that was the last time that you saw Idol Prime. Uh, they made sure to be there for your first tournament, and uh, unfortunately through pages, uh, leaving messages on their answering machine, uh, or looking for them at any of the practices, they have not turned up again since. But you all have each other, and it is just about time. Uh, a line is starting to form out in the street waiting outside. There are cliques from your school that you recognize that are, gay, that are standing outside, talking away. Um, there is definitely the clique of popular kids from your school standing outside. They don't hang out at the roller rink very often. Mm. They've maybe come by once or twice before, and the entire group is standing just outside the door waiting for you to open. Um, we should like let them in first, right? Like I should go out and be like, hey, if y'all want to get in first, you totally oh, can. That's a good idea, Prez. Uh, like, I don't like it. I think what? we should just let everybody in. Maybe we I just mean, let the people gonna... who were here first do that. And I, uh, Maura's going to like jump back into mundane form. Um, I think at Zippy's, Maura is in mundane form most of the time, um, staying out of the spotlight as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think we should respect the line. Well, we will. Everyone's still gonna get in, but like mm -hmm. the part of the whole point of the line is everyone's in an order. You gotta respect it. But like, you gotta respect. The I line. think we should just fling the doors open and say everybody in. Oh gosh. Okay. Uh, or that. There's. I mean, there's. The line will still be respected. I just think like. It would be really cool if they knew that we were giving them super cool special access. Maybe like one minute. They have like 60 seconds and then we let everyone else in. Why? I don't know. They're cool. Mm -hmm. They're cool. People. We're, we're, people. we're also very cool. We are very cool. But we could be cooler if we let them in earlier. You're the president. I say, let's try it. It's the okay. optics. It's our optics, you know? Mm -hmm. And it'll just be a minute, an extra minute, and okay. then everyone else can come in. Okay. So we'll go along with it. And then Polly and Al will go over to the door, yeah. like the entrance of yes. the skate park sort of thing. I'll be a bouncer while you go ahead and make yes. the speech. <laughs> I will open the door, and before anyone can come in, I, like, roll out. Um, and I'm just kind of gliding, but I will glide over to the popular kids. Um, but the first thing I'm saying, everyone, our doors will be opening very soon. Just wait right here and like calming down the crowd. And then I'll go over to them and just see who who's taking point so I can talk to them directly. Absolutely. Stepping to the front of the group, um, Artren. Artren is a young woman, a sophomore at your school, who has her hair um, pulled back into a high, tight ponytail. Uh, she looks like her day-to-day -day regular clothes look like a cheerleading uniform. Mm -hmm. It's not the school cheerleading uniform, but somehow cut to the exact Ex exact shape and fit of the uniform that you would see her in at school most of the time. Um, her hair is a jet black in that ponytail. Uh, she has like strong cheekbones and very carved out features and she's tall uh, and she definitely leans forward as she sees you approaching, uh, taking point. I love your ponytail so much. Thank you. It looks so good. 
um, we noticed that you all are kind of standing out here in the line and we're about to open and we wanted to see if you all wanted to come in before we let everyone else in, just to get a look at the place. She smiles, flattered for sure, um, not dropping any of her confidence, looking back to the group of them and goes, yeah, that'd be cool. Okay, just skate after me. <laughs> um, and I will turn around, do a little spin and just flourish and look you in the eye. It's like, I'm like, <laughs> Paul just trying to keep cool, but is inside like, whoa, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I will look back and make sure they're following. There's five of them, and Artrin leads the way directly behind you, mm -hmm. um, skates over their shoulders. Um, one of them already has their skates on, like they skated here. They brought their own from home, um, and they uh, head in behind you. She definitely stays closest to you, but they all make eye contact with you as like the bouncer mm -hmm. on the way in. Uh, and You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> You're fine. Most of these people have probably never made eye contact with you, mm. honestly, like directly. Everyone, this is Polly. Um, make sure that, you know, you give a little nod to them as they come in. Um, but this is going to be your key back in this place. So be very nice. It's a pleasure to meet you. I, I mean, go on in. Artrin proce proceeds in without saying anything. A few more go in, uh, but one person stops in particular and goes, oh, so you're a key in, huh? Uh, and reaches out a hand to shake yours hmm. uh, and goes, um, I, my name is Olive. I'm trying, I'm trying on the name Olive. Hmm. Um, it suits you. Yeah? Yeah, I wouldn't think any otherwise. Oh, that's that's cool. Um, and Olive, you've seen before at school going by a different name. Uh, this is a chosen name that mm -hmm. they're maybe exploring here for the first time, or at least the first time to you. It's popular, kids. You all know these people. Right. They just simply don't know you. Right. Minus Al. Everybody knows <laughs> that. Everyone knows me. <laughs> And Olive has put on um, a little bit of a, a soft like wing liner at the corner of their eyes um, and looks like they dressed up for the roller rink. Um, this is a place of expression. This is a place that is well lit and magical and sparkling. Uh, and they look incredibly excited to be here, whereas the rest of the popular kids seem to be keeping it really cool. And they very much wanted to be noticed by you. Mm. Well, you see, I'm not really the key here. The key? is Melody, and uh, they'll point inside over to like the DJ booth and where I imagine you're just like tuning everything up and cleaning yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I'm actually just like, oh, welcome everybody, come on in, and just like, ooh, and try to, <laughs> oh, something falls and like, oh, okay, setting up things. The entire group of popular kids, um, but in particular, Olive takes note of your role here, uh, <laughs> of, of like, vibe master as well either cleaning or doing the turntable like, yeah you can't tell if you can't yeah. even tell from this angle yeah so <laughs> because you the look like you're figuring out the turntable yeah. which makes so much sense <laughs> Molly just cleaning the record yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> heading in behind you you also see this Prime clientele of popular kids rolling in before the rest of the group. Um, they start sitting down to lace up their skates for those who still needed to. Um, and look to you as especially the only person who's not in your like magical form of the group and kind of give you a little bit of like a... And I'm fully behind the concession stand, like uh, incognito, uh, like pouring out slushies and like, like <laughs> scooping popcorn. <laughs> this is our equipment manager right over here. Hi. Um, yeah. Say hi. I say to all the popular people. Uh, they all wave at you, still the friendliest of them being Olive. Uh, but Artrin does uh, hear your call yes. and your request and um, give like a wave and a hey. Mora. Mora. Yeah. And then goes back to tying up their laces. And it's not like intentionally even dismissive to you in particular. That's just who Artrin is. Mm -hmm. Artrin just simply does not care. Yeah. Um, oh, and, don't treat me like that. That's okay. <laughs> and Artrin does this to everybody on the way in. Uh, and by the time they're done lacing up, it has been about the 60 seconds that you've promised them. 
All right, it's time. It's time. It's time. I fling open the gate and say, everyone, come on in. Oh, no, the line, the line, the line. Okay, fine, it's fine. It's fine. All order is lost. Uh, People are shoving <laughs> in side by side with each other. Uh, do you guys charge? No. No. That's what con concessions, and we've, I feel like we've got like two or three different kinds of yeah. like skates or like skateboards mm -hmm. or like extra like wheels and laces mm -hmm. for people to like, like throw us a couple of bucks yeah. or like some change here and there. Yeah. We've got club funds, so this is funded by the school. Yeah. That's true. Yes, you like, do. That is very true. That is how you maintain this place. Uh, and like you said, you have concessions. Uh, there are people who can like essentially rent through you and it's on kind of like a pay what you can for rentals yeah. um, so that people can grab an extra pair of skates or a skateboard if they wanted to, to go through one of the half pipes, but primarily roller skates and blades. Um, and everybody pushes in and the place is absolutely packed tonight. Whoa. And uh, there's a line for, of course, concessions. I know you've been scooping while uh, you've been on the door, though typically you're head chef, I believe. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you for recognizing my title. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, chef. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Please come rescue me so I can do rentals, oh my gosh. Oh yeah, you're relieved. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, Polly will start making the popcorn out of the machine, pouring slushies. Perfect. Like taking down who's borrowing what. Mm -hmm. yes. uh -huh. yes. Keeping track of who has Tickets it so you can up. get it back. Yeah. yeah. Spraying mm -hmm. the skates. With like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. As you're tucking the laces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tucking the laces, everyone, as they're bringing them back up. And your role uh, at this point while everybody's taking their positions is what, Al? Um, I just go around. I'm just keeping the good vibes going. Mm -hmm. I'm just wa rolling up to people. I'm encouraging them. I'm asking people if they want to try something new. Um, I'm probably acting as like a caddy as well, where mm. if people walk up with their friends, I will grab like whatever trash they have and I'll drop it off. I'm okay doing that. I'm also okay like grabbing skates. If there's like a bunch of people with skates that they're trying to return, I'll just grab it, skate behind and return it and give it back to you all. But I'm also like checking my phone or checking my phone, checking my pager mm -hmm. often, ah. like fairly often. So a lot of the times, I am off to the side watching the room mm. um, and kind of seeing where I'm needed and looking outside at like the half pipes and all of the different uh, features of our skate park and seeing if people need help, but I'm mostly paying attention to my pager. Mm. I feel like over uh, by the DJ booth, you hear like a boom, boom, boom. Hey, testing. Te okay, perfect. Te oh, it's working. It, it was a little too high, so <laughs> I adjusted feedback, it down. Feedback, feedback. <laughs> oh, okay. Perfect. Okay, welcome everybody. We're so excited you're here tonight. Have so much fun. Yes. And then I'll just put the mic down and just say, okay, T, Do, you got this? Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. And I let them manage the DJ booth. Just <laughs> say <a> hard rap. <laughs> <laughs> That's T. <laughs> I want you to roll a flow for me. Amazing. Ooh. Let's see how well you kick off this party. Yeah. How is the vibe set? Oh, let's see what these vibes are. Oh! What is it? It's two sixes. Oh, oh my god. Now, that's that is crinkle. something that you didn't have skill in, right? Because you're rolling a disadvantage yeah, for it. That's oh. okay. That is still an absolute success. The vibes are immaculate. Yeah. Amazing. God. The lights seem to be almost moving in tandem with the music. The disco ball shines light across every kid you've ever wanted to hang out with at your college uh, in just a way that makes it look like they are having the best, most memorable night of their lives. And it is all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly how I want it to be. <laughs> right, right? I, I feel like because you have the two fairies playing two different musics, yes. it's like a mashup. Oh, yeah. yes, it's so very it's like, contrasting, yeah, yeah, but it's like, like hard rap with like a K-pop or something. Yeah. Like yeah. But it works. Yeah, it it's works. Like, oh. It's so works. Yeah, you match, you match the BPMs, it all sounds great. <laughs> um, everybody is having a wonderful time. There is laughter. There are people just eating up the concessions. Y'all are going to make a little bit of extra fun money this hey. evening. Hey. And Al, your pager goes off. <gasps> Oh no, um, this is the other one. This is not the magical. Correct. Okay. Um, I think I feel it. Whoever I'm talking to at the moment, I give them like a theater kid hand squeeze and then I turn around. <laughs> I'm like, yes, you did I it. Do this You do. I love that so much. I do. <laughs> turn around and skate off and I think 
going to the pipe that enters like our clubhouse, like mm. just mm -hmm. where the sound and music echoes in, but yeah. it's not close enough to like be disruptive. Um, and I'm just gonna check. Okay. Pushing in through the door, you see a kind of ratted shag rug that looks like maybe it was left here from the last time this was an active club in your school. Uh, the place is filled with inflatable furniture, uh, yes. like a love seat sized couch and two additional chairs, uh, one bean bag on there. Uh, you have a television that is propped up on some crates mm -hmm. and it has like a pink color it looks like it was from maybe one of your childhood bedrooms mm. it has like the little like girl power logo Left on it peeled off stickers exactly yeah. like butterfly <laughs> stickers that have definitely worn a lot of the color yeah. off of it yeah um, it's clear that it was like taken out of one of your houses uh, to be in the clubhouse everything is kind of furnished by pieces that you've able been able to like scrap together that your parents were getting rid of or you found by a dumpster in some way but it's charming in that it looks like a like like a post high school paradise in that but you do pull your pager out now obviously you don't receive messages because it is a pager but you do recognize uh that it is a page from work mm. you, an obligation yeah um i'm gonna reveal something about myself i don't know how pages work so i'm just gonna sit <laughs> And see if it happens again. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially what'll happen is you'll get a message with a number and then you're expected to call the number. Oh yeah. no. And we do have we have a landline yeah. and an answering machine in that clubhouse. I would say like we consider that like probably like the the office. Yeah. yeah. So that would be where our landline is. So would be. I'm in this room, I will wait and then like I know that the number is there and I'm like, okay, I really do have to and it's a number I recognize and I'm not like looking at it's not a brand new number it's a number no. I've memorized so I mm -hmm. skate over to the crystallized uh, yeah. landline yes. <laughs> and pick it up and start tapping numbers <laughs> absolutely uh, it rings for just a moment before a familiar voice comes on the phone uh, no one else is able to hear this of course um, but you do hear a voice more familiar than you were expecting from that number it's your brother Ooh, uh, Zane, okay. Uh, Zane is on the line and asking you to come, asking you for help. Um, saying, hey, uh, I actually, I've got to dip out. Can you um, maybe take care of this business this evening? And is like kind of cryptic about it. Where, where are you going? Uh, Why do you have to dip out? Uh, I, I've got an errand to run for Grandma. Okay, well, another errand you could be running is just working at the pe like You could just keep working. That's an errand. That is an errand, and that's not the errand I need to do tonight. I've already told them you're coming in, and then hangs up on you. Okay. <laughs> Wham it <laughs> shut. Dial tone down. <laughs> uh, sits there. <laughs> it's always me. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, you are free to do with that what you will. You know that um, you have been asked for assistance in a matter mm. um, while everybody else is outside partying. Okay, I think I pocket this pager so nobody else can see it. Um, it is in my blazer pocket behind my mask. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm gonna skate out. And mm -hmm. I just like immediately, like when I'm in that full pipe, mm -hmm. I am just staring off into nowhere, and then when I step out, I am just like immediately smiles up, um, mm. and I'm looking at everyone, and I'm like, okay, and I go up to, I will skate to Artrin, mm -hmm. and I will say, are you having a good time? I thought you were president of the tennis club. Yes, and also the <laughs> Villains Empathy Club. Um, I've got the Villains Empathy Club, AV Club, of course, uh -huh. um, Soccer Observation Club, <laughs> the Upside Down Aerobics Club. Yeah, I'm kind of everywhere. Okay, how do you find the time to do this? Oh, it's really easy. It's actually, like, super simple. I didn't, uh, okay, well, yeah. maybe you should tell me about it sometime. I would be down. Um, if you, like, are you talking about an official capacity? Because I'm also a part of the Secrets Hidden Club. <laughs> or I just, like... I was just gonna see if maybe you wanted to join us for lunch tomorrow. We usually walk off campus. Yeah, that would be great. 
can my friends come or is this and she looks around at each of you polly's chugging the slushies <laughs> <laughs> There was some dare that has happened. And they... What is Melody doing? His, uh, Melody is yelling, chug, 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 chug. <laughs> and Mora is doing that. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and I just look around. My brain. It hurts. Our looks at each thing happening and looks back at you and goes, yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Sure. <laughs> and I'll turn around and see what I was pointing. I had no idea. I'm like, we'll bring the slushies. <laughs> <laughs> to lunch. Okay. To lunch, yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. I have to dip out. I've got, you know, I said it's super simple, but actually I really have a lot of things that I manage. So I've got to go do some managing. Makes sense to me. Um yeah, and they like once again like keep getting distracted by looking back yeah. at Pauldron of like. I think okay. you do it again. No, 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 no. <laughs> you, should, you should definitely watch that. That's important. <laughs> yeah, I actually I bet a little bit of money that he could. That oh yeah, do history, it again. history so, is about to be made right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I guess the odds are <laughs> four to one. Does it count that they did it if they get a brain freeze and Archon like heads yeah, into the crowd? Um, <laughs> and in the fluster of this and like you calling out bets, <laughs> um, I will skate backwards out of the place. <laughs> Just, Amazing. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pizza French fry. Pizza French fry. So <laughs> you disappear into the evening, into the streets of Alster City. We're going to stay with all of you for a moment here at the roller rink as uh, the phone uh, rings inside of your little fortress. Oh, 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 oh. Does everyone else hear the ringing? I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> Hello? Um. You heading in, the, the phone is like on the wall closest to the entrance for exactly this thing. Um, you pick up and you hear on uh, the other side of the line. Hello, um, this is the, this is the office. It's, it's me. Um, hi, it's uh, Mayor Heldreth. <clears throat> how, how can uh, I, how can we help? help you you have uh, performed a great service for our city today and um oh you saw that is, is there someone else there oh, <laughs> oh yeah put it on speaker i thought that's what you did oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on speaker oh um hello uh mayor heldreth goes um i would like to invite each of you to a um a private lunch tomorrow oh oh well yeah Where's uh, Al? I would like to discuss your training. I would like to discuss where your studies are. I would love oh. some feedback on how things are at the academy. And um, uh, I'm, I'm looking to assemble something of a student uh, task force, um, somebody that can assist in professional matters of magical people, but uh, with the freshest of training from the academy. You know, some of our uh, trained and practiced heroes, of course, uh, some of their uh, access and training is getting a little older these days. We would be delighted to have lunch tomorrow. I love lunch. This is a wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much. What time would you like to have lunch? Um, uh, they put the phone kind of down for a second, like check in with their assistant, um, and put the phone back up and go, uh, let's say uh, 1 p.m. That should be in between the breaks in your classes, right? Is that when the school You, you have gives lunch you? at 1 p.m. Right. I have one. I have one. Yeah, one. one PM. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know about Al though. I, I, okay, but Al is always able to get, to get a free period whenever. Yeah, Al can make it work. Okay. Yeah, one, one PM is is perfect. Perfect. Uh, come by the office and we'll take a stroll. Oh, uh, the, I've got the, a favorite bistro nearby. The, the, you want us to go to the mayor's office? My office. You're yes. You were at that would Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we know where that is. We could definitely. Yep. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I love uh, lunch. <gasps> okay. <laughs> and they're like, the mayor also sounds a little bit awkward on the phone. And the mayor's kind of like, I really don't know how to talk to teenagers. <laughs> As they're like hanging up the phone. Um, and they Nailed do. It. And, uh, Nailed it. <laughs> Ow. I'm like rubbing your back. <laughs> this is me rubbing your back. Yeah. 
Uh, as soon as that happens, Paul picks up the phone from your hands and mm -hmm. dials the pager number for Al, mm -hmm. indicating that they want to be called back here. So then they'll hang up the phone and wait. So we pager. We move over oh. to following Al. Of course, idle alias. You head into the darkness of the streets. You move past the area that has the well-lit um, like street posts, uh, and you head into the dark. We follow your wheels on the street themselves as you move down it uh, at a speeding pace. You arrive at a building. There's a little bit of like muffled conversation as somebody hands you a package. You're used to this process. Mm -hmm. You retrieve it, uh, and you follow your wheels once again to another location. You receive the page as you are uh, about to head from um, the point of pickup to a point of delivery. I look down. I recognize the number immediately. I have to ignore it. I don't know if there's like a reject page. <laughs> you just, just don't wait. call. Yeah, yeah. I just don't call. call. <laughs> Did you tell anybody about the lunch before you left? No. I just agreed wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And invited you all. Yeah. Just assumed no one else had plans. Yeah. We were free. We didn't. We yeah. were free. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty busy, but. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think I told anyone. And yeah. I think it's just this like devastating moment where I think I hear the page and I actually go for my like mundane pager uh -huh. and I actually like I recognize, okay, it's not that one. And I go for the magical pager and I'm just like so confused. I think I like when I'm skating, I will like trip um, and like skin my knee or something. Yeah. Just something, some sort of true struggle Ooh. as I confuse these two aspects of myself. Interesting. Um, yeah. um, I would like you to roll for me. I would like you to roll an express roll. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to dive into too much of what that means yet. Yeah, okay. Do you have anything in express? I do. I have one in express. All right, so you're rolling one flat d6 right now. Um, if you didn't have it, you'd be at disadvantage. That's a one. Oh. That is a oh, one. Oh, no, that's one of my dice. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> Why? I thought oh, you had warned, yes. warned about the cursed oh, die. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Taking this one. Um, so you do. You're fumbling with your pagers, uh, and the camera moves down. We get a POV shot of you looking down at the pagers. Uh, we see that your mundane one is more in reach, and notice your mundane clothing. What does your mundane clothing look like when you look down to it, actually? Yeah, I think, like, even as I'm skating, like, that shot just of me skating, you see the purple, like lavender roller skates and that beautiful wheel, but then suddenly, um, as I de-transform, um, you see like a bright orange hoodie that's a little bit too big, um, green kind of like green khaki pants uh, that have way too many pockets um, and chains kind of down uh, the thighs. Um, you see, she is like pushing a skateboard so that wheel like one of the wheels on the roller skates turns into a skateboard wheel um and she pushes forward um she's she looks completely different like no golden makeup uh she's got a little bit of makeup on but her pink hair comes down from a tight bun and just like falls down just a jungle around her face of like this beautiful uh, it, and it's no longer fully pink, like bubblegum bright pink. It's brown, like her natural hair, and at the tips, it's that pink. Mm. Um, but she looks very, like, almost like a break dancer. Uh, just clothes a little bit too big. Yeah. Um, just not as pristine as before. You continually throughout the night return to the pickup and drop off. And you pick up and you drop off, and you seem to have seen the entire city at this point, at least the main populous area, as you get some absolute miles on your skateboard, moving throughout, uh, unrecognized by anybody who would know you as Al. Um, coasting throughout the night, uh, we hear like a little bit of muffled conversations as you reach some drop-off points, people thanking you, uh, an exchange between hands without being able to really make out what it is that is passing between you. 
Um, you skate back out uh, and on the way back you do pass the pit. The pit is of course a large fissure in the earth, a cracked open portion, cavernous, sinking deep into the earth that you're used to seeing. Uh, many of you pass by it on a daily basis on your commute to school. Um, it bubbles with pink and purple liquid. It feels like it's constantly moving within itself and as it bubbles up towards the surface, the bubbles pop with a sparkle to them. It is radioactive looking, but radioactive bubble gum. It Ooh. is simultaneously beautiful and magical and it radiates with an energy that is familiar to you, but uh, has many, many signs surrounding it, warning people to not get too close to the edges. Um, you see like a list of things that you cannot do by there. It asks you not to skate too closely mm -hmm. to the edges. Um, you see like handmade signs that says like, this will not make you a magical girl. Please do not uh, touch the liquid. Um, definitely some that were put up by the city and some that were put up by like people trying to issue warnings. And you do see a kind of like lift from under the, um, under the liquid as it kind of bubbles throughout and there's a something pushing some of the liquid up towards the surface. Um, sometimes this happens when there are just kind of like larger bubbles moving through the waste, but you see something creating a struggle under the surface. I think um, I'm like reading over the sign as if it's like a, it's like a prayer, like no skateboarding, I do a kickflip. And then I, just keep, <laughs> I keep going through it. Absolutely no, like all of these, the rest of these. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just, I think it's, I have like the headphones on, like the 90s, early thousands, like huge wired headphones. Yeah. Um, and like a little Walkman. Um, so I'm listening to music and I push them off to the side and see the struggle. And I think I'm going to like basically pop my board so it flips over and I don't mm -hmm. have to worry about rolling away and I will walk closer to this uh, fenced area, seeing the struggle happen. You get up to the edge of it where it is fenced off mm -hmm. and there's something beautiful when you're close to it. This isn't the first time you felt that way. It's not mm -hmm. some kind of like trance that it is putting you under, um, but there is something that to all magical people feels like home about this. The plaque sits at the side telling the story of the first magical girls. How when accused of being witches, women were pushed into this strange pit. The people, the men who ran your city at this time, thought that witches had opened some kind of dangerous portal to another world. They thought that they were infecting the city and they were sent into the pit as punishment. And out from it arose the first five magical girls. Now, no such thing has happened since with anybody in the pit. There was some kind of very strange circumstance that created this, but you see the first five magical girls' names etched into the plate of it. Sugar, Kiko, Case, Ray, and Bell. These are historical figures. I mean, there are statues of them put up at your school. Yeah. You would know these anywhere. Uh, and while taking in the plaque, I would like you to roll. Do you have abilities in perceive or mm. analyze? In analyze, yes. Mm. So with analyze, you search beyond the surface of the presentation of the world. Um, you are taking a look into the pit itself, right? Yeah. Roll your analyze for me. Okay, so flat d6. That's a five. That's a Ooh. five, that is a success. Ooh, okay. Nice. Glimmering off of the bronze itself when one of the kind of like bubbles of magic almost sparks off of it as it's kind of shooting a little bit of debris. The, the liquid is pretty far down. It's not normal for it to come up this high for somebody who's standing on the surface to have like almost a spark near them of the magic. Another burst from under the surface of liquid like a bubble splashes forward and little bits of it stain and singe into your mundane clothing. It doesn't hurt, but you feel it pierce and burn through your clothing onto your skin as you absorb it in. Oh, oh no. no. 
uh, I think there's like a very audible like yell because I know what happens like this should not happen and I like take my hoodie and I just like try to like toss it to the side and just check where it absorbed into my skin. Pulling the hoodie off, you see that it has gone all the way through your clothing. The oversized t-shirt that you wear has small holes in it now. Uh, the holes look like right around the edges, almost like when you burn a hole in something, uh, but the edges are pink and purple. Uh, it could look kind of fashionable, but there are definitely holes in your clothing now. However, you are not affected. Um, it in your skin doesn't seem to have left any kind of mark of it. It seems to have been cosmetic to your clothing and um, it continues to bubble. It seems like maybe another one is starting to form under the surface. Um, I will back up completely. Um, I think I do want to, I want to glance at like what, is it just like a disturbance? Is there something coming out um, of this? I think I'll like back up but I'm still like kind of looking to be sure nothing's about to emerge right now. When you look back over, what you notice is the, the, the toxic liquid inside is rising. <sighs> Slowly moving closer to the surface of the crack in the earth. A uh, wave of fear goes over me in my mundane form and I am gonna pull out my I'm gonna pull out my regular pager uh -huh. and call my friends on accident using my regular, like mundane pager. Can I like, do that? You like can send out that send, a, yeah, we get like a page. send a page from an from an unknown uh -huh. thing. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Yeah, so I think I've mixed it up. In this, um, you have the number for everyone's pager saved, even in your mundane mm -hmm. uh, pager. You don't have their mundane pagers, num like the, the number that it would link them to. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were sending a page, it tells them to call somewhere. Yeah. Where would it be telling them to call? Oh, God. Is it a landline at your house? Um, is it um, like the the place that you've been um, for your like obligation this evening? Obligation. I think it's the obligation space. Um, okay. I am watching it rise. I'm like running my hands over the places that it like it got on me, um, and I think I'm gonna try to just like skate back as fast as I possibly can, okay. um, and send this out. The water is rising very slowly, or the liquid is rising very slowly in there. It's not about to overflow by any means, but it is enough that you can tell that it's happening. Stumbling backwards, you bump into the um, pedestal that has that um, engraved story of mm -hmm. the first magical girls. As you do on your hip, bump your mundane pager. Each of you gets a page from uh, a number that you don't recognize. Mm -hmm. And I think, depending how much time has passed since we paged, uh, Al, mm -hmm. I would say that like we've been like cycling out who's waiting by the phone yeah. for Al to call us yeah. back. At um, this point, maybe people have left and it's sort of closing mm -hmm. down. Yeah, the, it's the been area. a while. Yeah. Um, and we're happy to fill in anything that you wanted to get up to in that time. Uh, but at, at this point, people are starting to close up. People are taking off the skates, hopefully putting the laces back in. Just a quick reminder, mm -hmm. one of the abilities I believe that we took when we have mm -hmm. is that we can sort of telepathically communicate with each other when we're transformed. Mm -hmm. Do I remember that right? Yeah. Uh, never alone, right? Was never our... alone? Yeah, let's, let's look at the never that. alone ability and let's talk about it. Because um, I feel like if we knew that, but they're not transformed at the moment, I think that's really interesting. Like yeah. we're trying to reach out and we can't. So never alone is you may use teamwork regardless of the distance separating you. Oh, that's when you assist is. a teammate from afar, you ask the player a question about their character and you gather it for your info list about them. Oh. But we have to be transcended, right? No, I don't think so. That is your series ability. Nice. Um, oh. You can always assist each other. You do not have to be transformed for this. Got it. So if I can, yeah. while we're at the roller rink, we've been waiting for this call from mm -hmm. Al that hasn't come yet, and it's sort of made everybody worried. Yeah. And then we receive this mysterious page as right. well. I think uh, Polly looks back on uh, like a memory of that they have with Al of we would meet up at this statue of the, the memorial, and like that's gonna be us someday yeah. type of thing. 
And so like getting getting you a bonus to dodge whatever's coming out of there. Mm -hmm. But also maybe jogging a memory if that's where they could be. Yeah, yeah, I think, oh, okay. So what is the, what is the quickest way to, should I just call them when I get to the place? Yeah, so you can go somewhere and get to a phone. There's no other way for you to contact each other yeah. right now. Um, I will say, you are all connected. You have formed an idol group. You do feel something in your heart uh, in a place that you feel when you all combine your powers together. Mm -hmm. um, so as you are kind of stumbling backwards to try and escape, I'm going to have you roll flow for me, and yeah. you're going to take an additional d6 from the assist from Polly. Perfect. Okay, I have nothing in flow, so this is still just flat. Okay, but hey, it gets you out of that disadvantage. Yeah, it does. Advantage. Six? Oh, oh that's hey, good. Yeah. Success. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This is great. Perfect. You I'm know. Gonna, I'm going to attribute that to you. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. me? To you. That's not one of mine. <laughs> that's why I that's you feel better. You, <laughs> you feel the sense of urgency. You feel a... There's a feeling inside of you that disappears when you take your mundane form. There is that overwhelming sense of confidence and charisma. It's part of your mask that you wear as a magical person. Um, and you are bolstered with a little bit of it, even in your mundane form. Um, it, it, it kind of fills through you like you're about to transform, but not choosing to transform yet. Mm -hmm. And you are able to successfully jump on and glide out of uh, the area where the the kind of bubbling and popping is starting, and um, it shouldn't take you long. Are you heading to uh, the skate park, or are you heading home? Where would you like to go? You've got oh, the whole city. No, I don't want anyone to see me. Um, I think I'm going home. You are I also able to transform if you choose to. Great, then I'll do that. Um, I think I've solo transformation. The thing. Yeah, I think I've bumped uh, the. Uh, slab that has the lore on it uh -huh. and I'm like just backing up and like trying to get away and as I'm starting to skate I like pick up my board and I start running mm -hmm. um, and I'll throw it out in front of me and that one wheel just begins to light up and I as I jump onto it I'm like literally jumping in the skates um, the it's I think it's just this beautiful uh, swirling mask that comes uh, well actually I'll say the wheel just glides up my form, similar to like the ramp that I made earlier. Yes. Um, and it comes to my hand, uh, turns into a mask, I bring it down, and uh -huh. I'm just wearing my magical girl costume, just uh -huh. beautiful purples, lavenders, um, and that scepter is once again like made out of almost nothing. Um, and I see, like I don't have my skateboard anymore, I have my roller skates. I am going to look at those spots and see like, if just anything happen? Is the is my what's going on? <laughs> Your magical suit mm -hmm. is not. It does not have holes where it was burned through. Um, I know, but it does have something to it. It has like a, a little bit of almost a discoloration to it. It looks beautiful. It looks like almost like an acid wash. Uh, on the edges of your your uniform in the same places. It looks like you did it on purpose, yeah. but it is different. That's not what your costume looked like beforehand. It spreads into areas a little larger than the little holes were in it to create these kind of patches in it um, that look like a, like a tie-dye yeah. almost of the colors of pink and blue. Then I will connect to the rest of the team. Um, I will just give up the pager entirely and mm. just connect to you all. Um, and if I can, like, send a, sp like, feeling of urgency to yeah. you all. Um, and I don't know if there's a way for me to communicate my location to them. Um, but I almost think this scepter, like, raising it up into the sky, mm -hmm. uh, like a beam of light oh. goes straight up. And it's, yeah. like, my lavender and gingham and glitter. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Just, and I'm just like, please. <laughs> oh, do you feel that? Yeah. Oh, do you see that? They're in trouble. Okay, we have to go get Al. You gotta transform. Oh yeah. Let's roll. Let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> Off of the Let's roll. <laughs> <laughs> you are racing your way back towards the roller rink. Mm -hmm. The light in the sky is traveling towards you. It's a beacon moving in your direction. You see it coming uh, towards you. Are you all leaving the roller rink to head towards it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As we go, though, uh, at the very end, Polly will like lock the gate. 
<laughs> yeah, like like close like yeah, like closes yeah. down behind us as like like transforming on the go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just be like, the oh, <laughs> <laughs> Your transformation sequence starts again, starting at your fingertips, the opening of your book. Uh, the wind is kind of blowing the pages before it even starts with like the magical effect from your book as you're trying to move at the same time. And it's kind of like you know when you're trying to put pants on and walk at yeah, the same yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, your your magical form is kind energy. of doing that where you're like having to kind of hop into it as it spreads across <laughs> you and out of the pages of the book but you do successfully transform as you run both of you still in your magical outfits in your magical form uh, and you collide right into each other in the street uh, oh. just a few blocks away from the roller rink what, what's happening what's, what's wrong look, okay? look, 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 look. What, what 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 and what? i will point at this and i'll say it was the the pit the pit it i wasn't doing anything and it bubbled up and it came it it's like rising. Something's going on. The pit? It, the pit. Yes. It bubbled up and it started rising and it looked like something was coming out of it and it it some of it got on me and it, Do you are you okay? Did it hurt? I, I feel fine, but like look at this. It's I don't know if it's gonna do anything to my power. I do we what do we do? Do we tell someone? Do we do we go to the pit? We, we have to. The pit are, is rising. It's it's something's gonna happen. Each of you. I want you to roll either a. Uh, I want you to roll a perceive for me. Unless you would like to argue. Ooh, I have. Or why you could be good at something else. Four. I also got a four. Oh. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Synchronicity. Yeah. Four is all around. Now that is in the category of mixed success. Mm -hmm. Each of you, looking at the spot uh, on Al's uniform feel a little bit of a burning sensation in the same spot on your own chests. You, you don't notice it in like a sharp, sudden way. It feels almost like it might have started activating when your worry did. When you reached out and you connected, whether it was telepathic in some way, communicating through the strings of magic that connect you all, something started that felt like it was maybe just nervousness and anxiousness in your chest, a tightening of it, now has centralized into that specific location. It's not searing pain, but there is uh, like a like a few day old sunburn mm -hmm. starting to just kind of sting on your chest a little bit in that area. Al, you don't feel it. What, do you, you all feel that too? Yeah. Or all, Ow. what? Feels so strange. It's weird. What do you mean? It's it's just my outfit. But no, no, it kind of hurts. Physically. Yeah, we can feel it too. You don't hurt. I don't feel anything. Can I like? Yeah. Yeah. No. Nothing. Ow. You touch it with your hands. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. We were all <laughs> touching it. Yeah, yeah. I believe you did. Now you all touched your own. Right. Oh. Mora touched owls. Um, so Oops. Mora, <laughs> when you touch it, you get a strange vision. Uh-oh. The book on your side, you can feel like pulsating a little bit. Uh, it is a sense that you feel when you know that there is something familiar happening. It's almost like deja vu. Uh, it's like you've experienced this before. I hear like, like the rustling of pages is like mm -hmm. almost like even though I don't see them, I like can feel them flipping and opening. You see the four of you standing at the pit. You see another bubble come forth and you see it burst and start to settle back down. It's like the water level is rising and sinking inside of it. You can see it, the liquid itself moving, taking on an almost lifelike Thing to it, uh, and you start to see little bits of um, spectral, almost hands climbing and crawling out of the pit. And you're back. Huh. Uh, Did it hurt? You, um, it's just, it still hurts me a little. It's just weird, but I just saw, I saw it. I saw it bubbling. I saw all of us standing by the bubble but it's not just the it's not just like whatever is in the pit rising something is climbing out we have to go we have to stop it 
Let's roll. Let's oh. roll. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it. Having just come from that way, you're yeah. turning around, and we will smash cut back to you standing over the pit, each and every one of you up against the gate there. You see the same thing that Al was able to describe to you of the level rising, of the bubbling. Uh, you're able to dodge the little kind of like sparks that are coming up from it, and you do see, knowing exactly what you're looking for, the spectral hands start to climb up out as soon as i see that i'm going to raise one of my pink shields and sort of have it be big enough to cover the four of us to look down like observation you place it in front of you each of you and it's like uh it's it's somewhat translucent Very, you see yeah. through it so Pink-ish. anybody who wants to uh can see through the like pink mm-hmm. you but you're able to see through it if you wanted to look over the pit still standing directly behind it yeah. as pauldron protects all of you uh, a, a bubble bursts and a bit of it sizzles off of your shield Oof. without damaging it okay. but you see that it would have hit you it was coming straight for you and each of you were protected by this as the hands continue to crawl out and one grabs your foot <gasps> Mora is pulled in oh no! Can- can you are able to try and grab onto the ro- the edge, but you are pulled off of your feet and being dragged towards the edge sure of it. Yes, you yes. sure are. Uh, I would like for you to roll a defy for yeah, me. Yeah, I have so I think that much, let's try and push against that. I have oh, so much uh, in defy. No, oh, that's a bummer. Oh. Three. Three. Oh. Elven was a six. But. Oh. With a three, um, Mora is pulled. The hand crawled directly under your shield, just grabbed onto the skate, and Mora is being pulled under. More hands pulling out of the pit. There's dozens. There's a hundred hands climbing out of the pit, each of them spectral. Each of them look like they're made up of the pink and the purple magic. None of them have a physical, tangible form. They look like they're almost fleeting in your vision, and they're all reaching for your skates. Run, 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 run! Oh, no. back up and... Oh. I'm gonna try and grab yeah, onto sure. you. I throw my scepter down so you can grab onto it. I just, yeah, like, I'm absolutely just, like trying to flail, um, uh, like telling them to run, but also grasping for that help of that like panic, uh, seeing if I can just ha- get any handhold. Let's do a group action. Yes. 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 Who would like to lead the group action? Can I? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, like, as we are all grabbing for each other, I'm going to, like, sing a little song to, yeah. like, try to encourage us as we're doing this. And I'll just say, have no fear, your friends are here. And, uh, like, the words will kind of, like, dance around us. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so when we're involved in the group action, it says we can count multiple D6s from different roles as a critical success. So, nice. hopefully, most of us do that. Uh, and then, I'm leading, so I will take at most one stress regardless of the number of failed rolls. Nice. Okay, that is an incredible ability that makes this uh, much less risky. So everybody is going to roll. Now, you are rolling to protect. Uh, I'm going to say defy, Mm -hmm. unless anybody would like to uh, pitch another way that you are helping. All right, everybody rolls your defy, and all of your successes count. All of your failures typically count, and that would usually cause more stress. But because Ashley has the special ability, it is one stress maximum. I don't roll again, right? You do not roll for this. Actually, you know what? It's a group action. Roll your grip on it. Sure. Roll your defy. Sorry in advance. (laughs) One. Oh, no. Oh, no. Two. Shoot. Four. Two. Ooh. Okay. (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. Yes. Yes. Uh Uh-oh. Pauldron. Yeah. Holding on to your shield. You're wedging it kind of into the little fence that holds back and you're trying to get a grip into it, but your arm, uh, you can feel sweat kind of pooling into it. It doesn't feel like a physical shield usually, it's magic and it almost feels like you are trying to maintain grip onto something physical as the hands come over all of your legs. They reach up over your skates, pulling each of you off of your feet. All of you are dragged into falling but not for long as the water rises. The pit. The pit, a place of worship for this city, a place with lots of signs advising you not to get this close to it. Uh. And for a moment, you disappear into the same place that you do when your transformation starts. The world melts away around you. 
you're alone. You're alone with your own source of your magic. It's quiet. And a transformation sequence isn't happening. Usually, as soon as you arrive in this place, you are overtaken with uh, your, your sequence. But you're just alone there. There is an echo of the sounds that were happening just before, but it sounds like they're on the outside of a thick wall. The sounds of the boiling of the water and bubbling of it, the sounds of your friends yelling out as you're all pulled under in complete silence. And you stay there and you don't know how long it's been there's no points of reference everything is vast and unending because you can't see anything and you can't grip onto anything it is po impossible to tell the passage of time you're not sure if you just got here or if you've potentially been living here for some time and each of your eyes open covered still in liquid laid out on dying grass, a yellow field of dirt and clumped together weeds underneath you. Where are we? I don't know. Is, is everyone okay? Uh, I think so. Each of you are going to take uh, two points of stress. Oh, oh. Oof. Is a, is a tough time there. But none of you seem to have any physical injuries from this. You feel exhausted. You lay in this rough, poking grass. Mm. The sky above you looks almost like the liquid. It's not the viscosity of it. It is sky, but it takes a dimmer version of those colors. It doesn't sparkle with life and magic and radiance, but it does move above you. The clouds and shades of pink and red over a purple sky, the sun nowhere in sight, but a, a, a dim daylight still spills in through the clouds. Hey Prez, you think we're in the pit? Um. For the first time in forever, I am absolutely not sure. Do I still have my book? You do. Oh, is anything, is there any landscape around that looks familiar? There has to be something. There has to be something. We're gonna uh, answer both of those. Looking around, the landscape is deeply unfamiliar to you. It's almost uncanny because you want to recognize it. It's laid out similar to your city. Um, the buildings are in the right places, but look nothing similar. Whereas the streets are squeaky clean of your city, where uh, the buildings shine with a bright white, where everything is pristine and maintained and built around uh, the, the aesthetic of your lives. These buildings are dark, decrepit brick. These buildings take the same shape and placement, but look condemned. Uh, look to be falling apart. Large gaping holes in the side of buildings with rubble in them. Um, you can see inside uh, tipped over pieces of wooden furniture. There aren't any people that you can see, only a city that looks like it has already fallen to a terrible fate. And as you open your book, you just see the words, I'm sorry, and good luck. And that is where we are going to call oh it my gosh, get out. Ah. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> good luck. Good luck. <laughs> That's from me to you, Kaylee. Best of luck to you on this one. Hey, uh, thank you all so much for joining us for our first episode of In the Name of. Thank you so much to Evil Hat for sponsoring the series. We have three more episodes to figure out what the hell is going on here. Now, we have been playing into the At the Brink of the Abyss playbook. We are going to be moving over into a different playbook of this. Something that's really fun about this book is there are four different settings that you can play this in. The first one, of course, is the setting that we did our own spin on hmm. initially. Your kind of traditional magical girl world. We are going to be moving into beneath a rotting sky and exploring Whoa. what the world is like <laughs> elsewhere Whoa. for oh our pristine magical girls. Let's go around one more time and meet all of these lovely folks. Oh my gosh. Uh... 
I'm sorry and good luck. My name is Lexi, otherwise known as Michael Mage. And you know, I was your idol alias. Mm -hmm. And I am Kaylee Bray, and I was your idol vision. Goodbye and good luck, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Danny Gage, otherwise known as Better Thorn on the internet. And. Ah! <laughs> Flash. Ah. And I played Idol Melody. <laughs> and I'm Xander Genre at Xanderific all over the place. And I'm Idol Guard and Idol very confused. <laughs> <laughs> This has been so much fun. Thank you for joining us. I'm very excited to explore some of these themes. Uh, you know, we got to have a little bit of fun. We got to live a day in the normal life yeah. before it was ripped away from me forever. Okay. And, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what that's like, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye and good luck. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Good luck. <laughs>